Hello students and welcome back. Today we are going to talk about Tanja Urbani. Yes. The cultural and the political capital of Tamil Nadu or the Tamil land is Tanjavur, variously called as Tanjavur or Tanjore. It is also the rice bowl of the region providing food and sustenance for millions. Tanjavur Bani is so called because it hails from the region wherein were based four brothers Chinnaya, Ponnaya, Shivanandam and Vadivel forming the Tanjavur Quartet. They were the court musicians under the Marathi ruler Sarfoji II, 1798 to 1832. Their descendant and marriage alliance led to the creation of what is called a Tanjavur Bani of which Pandanallur is but a popular branch. Bharat Natyam is an ocean. Banis are the stream or rivulet that flow into the river of ocean. Banis are not independent of the form itself, but either enhance it or identify it. With zealous students nowadays, Tom Tom their gurus and Banis, each vying to highlight their own, the pioneering gurus themselves had no point of view on such manis and freely gave and took from each other. These first generation guru did not need such nomenclature because their main aim was to establish the art form long neglected and sidelined, win new adherents and they were not interested in turfs. They were the originators and creators of these manis and wisely knew the art was bigger than individuals. The four brothers collectively heralded and shaped what was perhaps the most glorious flowering of the dance form that was then called Sadir or Chinnamelam. Each of the brothers were undisputed musical genius. Between them, they made definitive moves to codify the dance, to develop a pedagogy starting with the basic adabus and culminating in the concert repertoire to bind the temple performance of dance to agamic ritual. The celebrated brothers were born in a Natuvanar choreographer and composer family and were educated in music by the great saint poet Muttuswami Dikshityar, one of the members of the trinity of Karnataki music. The four brothers flourished under the royal patronage and went to the same court musician at various South Indian courts. Chennai, 1802-1856, took Bharatnatyam to the Vadiyavar court in Karnataka, Mysore. Ponnaya, 1804-1864, and Shivanandam, 1808-1863, stayed on in Tanjavur under Maratha patronage and the last Vadivelu 1810 to 1845 modified the violin for the use in Karnataka music which accompanies the dance. Vadivel introduced and popularized violin in Karnataka music concerts along with Baluswami Dikshityar. He was also responsible along with Swati Tirunal, the Maharaja of Travanko for popularization of Mohiniattam, providing opportunities to women dancers. Until then, Kathakali, the main preserve, dominated the dance scene in Kerala. The brothers composed a large number of Varnams and Krutis, including the Navaratnamala, a tribute to their guru, Dikshityar, called Vadivelu and Ek Sand Grahi one who had the ability to reproduce a song after hearing it only once. The Tanjavur quartet codified the basic Bharatnatyam Aduvus, that is the dance unit, designed the Margam, the configuration of the contemporary Bharatnatyam performance form Alaripu to Tilana, appropriate for the concert stage. The brothers composed an impressive number of Alaripus, Jatishwaram, 
Kautvams, Shabdam, Varanam, Padam, Javalis, Kirtanas and Tilanas and brought artistic changes and innovation of matchless exequiteness to the tradition. Their masterpieces of compositions are unparalleled and honored in the world of classical music and dance. Margam evolved by the quartet in a structured manner, introduced Nritya and Ritya, including Abhinaya, to make the transition from one to the other easy and smooth for the artist and the viewers alike. It was the standard fare offered by the dancers till about the third quarter of the last century after its great revival in the earlier quarter. Its key day was reached during the 25 years after independence when great gurus like Pandanallur Meenakshi Sundaram Pillai, Kuttumar Koil Muttukumar Pillai, Tiruvannamur Kuppaya Pillai and Vansamur Ramaya Pillai strode the field like giants and groomed many students who later became international stars. It must be emphasized that Tanjavur Bani is unique within the Isai Vellala community as it did not have any hereditary dancers, only musicians. Until recently, it has not had any hereditary dancers, Devadasi, in their family tree. It also did not allow until the 19th century its women to have professional artistic status in public domain. It is the male members of this group who are associated with music and teaching dance. This feature makes it uniquely different from all others at that time, which means while they could be gifted and perform on family occasions, they were not public performers. In the 20th century, this Bani got two streams represented by popular heads, Meenakshi Sundaram Pillai and Pichaya Pillai. One stayed in Pandanallur and briefly in Madras. One in Tanjavur, one Meenakshi Sundaram became hereditary and one not Pichaya. Tanjavur K.P. Kittappa, 1913 to 1999, and his brother K.P. Shivanandam, direct descendants of the Tanjavur Quartet, are the sons of Ponnaya Pillai, a great scholar in music and dance. Credit goes to them for reviving rare dance form that used to be performed as a part of the temple ritual and worship. Vaijanti Mala Bali brought out the book Tanjai Nalviran Adi Sangeet Bharatakala Manjari that has musical dance compositions that have not been accessible to general public so far. She dwelled into a treasure house of rare Bharatnatyam dance by Tanjavur Quartet. Says Vaijanti Mala, As their disciple, I am keenly interested in maintaining the pure and Princetine form of Bharatnatyam and strictly adhering to the Tanjavur Bani. My grandmother, the late Yadugiri Devi, was instrumental in getting the book Adi Bharata Kala Manjari published by my dance academy in 1964. Some of the ancient musical dance compositions such as Navasandhi Kautvam, Panchamurti Kautvam, Prabandhams, Geetam, Tayam, and Solladi found place in books edited by Kittapa Pillai and Shivanandan. Their family had carefully preserved the text with Sahitya, Swara and Tala and also maintained several musical traditions. Now, some of the beautiful pieces have been revived and compiled by Chinnaya Shivkumar, son of Shivanandan. The new publication contains some valuable and rare compositions including Jatiswarams, Tana, Varanam, Padam, Swaranams and Tillana. This will be an invaluable work of art which brings alive the rich and glorious tradition compositions of ancient times. Trained as a musician, a vocalist and a mridangist, according 
to the time-honored custom of his family and son of a remarkable musician scholar Ponaya Pillai, Kittappa braved parental disapproval to take up dance teacher's tap stick. One could see why he had to. He was a born choreographer. A dance teacher must have eyes. He often said he had singularly far-seeing pair. He revived his family's old repertoire and composed new pieces for his student, always observant, always able to tell exactly what movement could suit each one and what each one's emotional bent was. The complex rhythms of the Pandanalur style were as simple under his management and as natural as the beating of one's heart. He was generous to his student and unlike some gurus, did not object to their working with other teachers. His son Chandrasekhar inherits and passes on this tradition working at Thiruvavur and Chennai. In Kittapa Pillai's choreography, music comes first. He seems to see the visual along with the music. So, whenever he choreographed a dance pattern, into a musical structure, it blended perfectly into it. He did not advocate unnecessary brigas or the twisting of the words in swinging. His sangathis in varnam and padams gave utmost importance to the word and its emotional content. His musical rendering for dance may sound a little too simple, but in combination with dance choreography, his music takes on a quite another hue. Guru Kittapa's choreography or Audavus was always in uh, Madhyam Kalam. Sometimes he combined it with the solos in faster tempos. His jatis never seem complicated, but when one starts reciting them with talam, one realizes the clever weave of pancha jatis and karavais. His philosophy of Bharatnatyam was that. Dance should be beautiful to see and to listen. In the present day, many of the Thirmanams or the rhythmic sequences that are performed in pure dance numbers have their origin in one way or the other from Kittapa's choreographical collections either inherited or embellished by Kittapa himself. Several unique features of the execute dance compositions of the Tanjavur Quartet are based solely on the fact that the composers of these were endowed with excellent skills in the theory and practice of music and dance and different languages. Sri Raj Rajeshwar Bharatanatya Kala Mandir in Mumbai has been propagating the tenets of Tanjavur style. It was founded in 1945 by A.T. Govindraj Pillai, 1914 to 1984 assisted by his wife, Karunambar. The success of this venture led to the migration of Govindraj Pillai's father-in-law, T.P. Kuppaya Pillai and his family from Tanjavur to Mumbai. Starting with just four students, the institution grew in course of time into a banyan tree with sons T.K. Mahalingam Pillai, 1916-2002, contribute and K. Kalyan Sundaram, born 1932, contributing their individual brilliance. The Raj Rajeshwari gurus have an illustrious lineage of ancestors dating back to more than three centuries. Venkat Krishna Natuvanar enjoyed the patronage of the Maratha ruler Sarfoji II of Tanjavur. The second generation of Veeraswami Natuvanar and his sister Chinnapa Ammar were followed by the renowned Panchapiksha Natuvanar, 1845 to 1902, who was the Samastha Vidwan of Tanjavur and Ramanath Puram courts. The Panchapiksha Natuvanar was also honored by the royal houses of Baroda and Mysore. He is credited with compiling Abhinaya Navachetanam, a monumental treatise on Abhinaya and a practical guide specially to Hastabhinaya based on Nandi Keshwar's Abhinaya Darpan. His only son, Kuppaya Pillai, 
1887 to 1981, the prime architect of Sri Raj Rajeshwari Bharatanatya Kala Mandir is credited with reviving ancient Kavutvams, especially Navasandhi Kavutvams in the early 1940s. His Kamala Chakram, a lotus wheeled compendium depicting the mantras based complex 108 thala beside the popular 35 thalas is invaluable to all students of music and dance. His son-in-law A.T. Govindraj Pillai, son T.K. Mahalingam Pillai and T.K. Marutappa Pillai, K. Kalyan Sundaram, daughter Karunambal and daughter-in-law Maithili Kalyan Sundaram have helped the institution to blossom into what it is today. The versatility of the Guru shine through the dance drama and the Ekaharya depictions they have choreographed, in all of which the aesthetic grace of the Tanja Urbani catches the style. The geometric extitudes in the way the limbs are aligned gives the Adavus the distinctive aesthetic touch. The symmetry and grace in the movement with the body in the center makes the delightful viewing. There is no ungainly bending or overstretching of any part of the body at any time. The head and the hand movement are marked by alluring grace with neither stiffness in movement nor slackness. The large variety of adavus ensures that the tilanas, jatishwarams, etc. have koravis that are not repetitive in nature. In every koravi or jatis, different nritha hastas are employed to make for interesting viewing. The jatis are short and crisp, employing several permutation and combination of jatis interwoven so cleverly that the layman does not realize the extent of complications in the calculations. Relaxed presentations as opposed to frenzied execution of jatis is characteristic of this bani. Mridanga jatis are aligned with solla kuttus and not the other way around. The gurus of this school believe that the power below the waist and grace above it is the essence of good nritya. Guru Kalyan Sundaram was among the first to introduce musical preludes in Padams and Javalis to establish the storyline. This helped city audience of places like Mumbai with no base for Tamil culture in the 60s to come closer to the art form. Abhinaya is Shubal. The Guru strongly believed that it is the duty of the dancers to suggest and the audience to imagine it. Guru Mahalingam Pillai, who has himself written beautiful padams, was against overdramatization. The repertoire of the school covers the whole gamut of the margam, thematic dancing and group production. Emphasis on singing with the bhava and clarity of sahitya. The natuvnars of this bani are always accomplished musicians and can sing along while wielding the symbols. Guru Murathappa Pillai was an excellent choreographer and a respected Mridangam Vidwan. Guru Govindraj Pillai, besides being a Natvangam Vidwan, was an excellent Sangeet Vidwan too. His brief raga essays before each dance item elicited praise from the musicians of repute and created the right ambience for the setting of the music several new pieces for dance. Guru Kalyan Sundaram is known for his flair for composing and setting to music several new pieces for dance. Some of the Kalyan Sundaram's prominent disciples include Malvika Surakai, Sudha Chandra Shekhar, Vani Ganpati, Latapad, Preeti Varier, Sunita Pillai, Viji Prakash, Gauri Rao, Padmaja Suresh, mostly Bombay talent of that period. Kandapa Pillai, 1899 to 1941, second wife was the granddaughter of Ponnaya Pillai of Tanjavur quarter and the childhood playmate of Dhanamal's daughter Lakshmi Ratnam. 
Khandaba's ancestry has been in service of Tanjavur court during the 17th century, moved to Tirnalveli during the 18th century and returned to Tanjavur around 1800. Khandaba's father, Neliappa Natuvna, trained dancers of an earlier generation. He taught music to Jayamal and Lakshmi Ratnam, but not to his son Kandapa, who learned Natuvangam from his paternal grandfather Kandaswami. Natuvanar of Baroda and from his uncle K. Ponnaya. Kandapa's rhythmic compositions for dance reflect adherence to principles of structure that set him apart among relatives who also represented the Tanjavur Natavanar family tradition. From Tanjavur to Georgetown, Chennai came Guru Kandapa Pillai in the early 20th century with a lineage to boast of. His stiltage of Bala, granddaughter of Veena Dhanamal, helped her heart and his own outreach. He went to teach so far as Almora when Uday Shankar started his dance studio there. Thus a guru from Tanjavur taught in the Himalayas. Kandapa's jatis were tight and taut and Bala represented the show flooring of this. At Almora, the guru found the food and cold climate a detriment to his overall health and soon returned to Madras. Guru Ellapa Pillai came from Kanchipuram and honed his skill with Kandapa. His home in Mambalam attracted likes of Ram Gopal, the internationally famous dancer and a host of French girls who made Madras their dance home. He was a skillful teacher and a great singer. Tanjavur was actually the source from where almost all dance gurus came. They were teachers of new urban elite of Madras, which included many film stars. Some gurus were more famous because they were in great demand to direct dance sequences in Tamil films. Tanjavur quoted being the founders musically, one of the families that made dance prominent other than non hereditary mention, Pichaya, was Tanjavur Bala Saraswati. 1918 to 1984. Bala was the 7th generation descendant of the musician and dancer. Papa Mal from the 18th century Tanjavur court, hailing from the Devdasi community, Bala is celebrated for helping continue the pristine art of Devdasis. More than her technique, it was her Abhinay that was celebrated. The quality of the music that she used was exceptional. This was not surprising because she was the great granddaughter of the legendary Veena player Dhanamal. Bala Saraswati's whole family was accomplished in music and dance. The legendary Jayamal, Bala Saraswati's mother, who sang for Bala's performance, was the daughter of the legendary Veena Dhanamal. A trained singer, Bala sang for her daughter. Lakshmi Kaigat's dance performance in later years. Under her demanding guru N. Kannappa, a sixth generation Natuvanar of the Tanjavur uh, Chinnaya line, who represented the best of the Tanjavur quarters, she flowered into a great dancer. His early death left her without a perfectionist taskmaster, but by then the West had discovered her and soon. She was lauded at home too. Till her death, Bala remained an important link to the Devdasi tradition. Vocalists T. Brinda and T. Mukta were daughters of Kamakshi Ammal and granddaughters of Veena Dhanamal. They were cousins of Bala, whose younger brother T. Vishwanath, flautist, and T. Ranganath, Brindangist, were also prominent performers and music teachers in India and United States. As an accompanist to his uh, performers and music teachers in India and United States, Sister Bala, in her recital, Vishwa made valuable contribution to dance music. Filmmaker Satyajit Rai first saw Bala Saraswati in 1935 when he was 14 years old and she was 17. He wanted to make a film on her 
1966, but the project worked out only a decade later. Bala Saraswati is listed among America's irreplaceable dance treasures, the first hundred for being a veritable ambassador for Bharat Natyam outside India. While several learned from her, it is her daughter Lakshmi Knight who continued her legacy. Lakshmi died in December 2001. Aniruddha suffered being who he is since early childhood. Tamil Nadu being so caste oriented in the art, he was singled out because he was the great Bala's grandson and Lakshmi's son. He was shy and his fancy upbringing in USA did not help. When he first appeared on stage as a lanky teenager in Kurta Pajama some 15 years ago, many wrote him off. He dealt with that. He dealt with the death of his mother at a young age and he dealt with all the barbs and digs. Today, he is the best, yes, he is the best among all the male solo Bharatanatyam dancers. Anirudh learned music in two different ways, music for the sake of music and music for dance and, and the two are different. In fact, he is amongst the very few if not the only one who can sing to and knows music as well as he knows dance. Entranced by Vaijanti Mala's dance Nartaki, Nataraj went to Tanjavur to seek training under Guru Kittapa Pillai, but had to wait for a year before he accepted her as the disciple. It was he who named her Nartaki. Nartaki Nataraj stayed with Kittapa Pillai for 15 years, yes, and is now one of the foremost performers of Tanjavur Bani. In 2000, she started Valiam Balam School of Dance in Chennai. She specializes in rare and ancient Tamil composition, Thevaram, Tharpagal and Tiruvasagam. She has a huge collection of rare Tamil books which she refers to when working on dance production. She also presents women oriented theme, Guru Acharya Parvati Kumar who had done exhaustive study of King Sharfoji's contribution. He created Nirupanas and put them in dance shape. The first Nirupana was taught to Srimati Paul Shastri, Srimati Suchita Chafekar and others in due course. Suteja Chafekar was inspired by her Guru's research and made presentations of hereto unknown Marathi compositions of Tanjaur Maharaja or the rulers between 17th and the 19th century. She also honored some rare Marathi, Hindi and Sanskrit compositions of King Shahji from the hidden treasures of Saraswati Mahal Library of Tanjavur with the guidance from Dr. V. Raghavan and her guru Kitapa Pillai. Students, I hope you have enjoyed the Tanjavur Quartet's journey today.